Hi everyone, today's video is all about the Motorola Edge 30 Fusion and of course in this Viva Magenta color which is actually quite nice combined with a really lovely texture on the back as well. Either way, let's unbox it and of course talk about my impressions so far of the phone itself and of course a full review will follow later. So let's begin with the unboxing of the Motorola Edge 30 Fusion. Now straight away you can see that there's a clear difference in terms of box. This is actually made out of cardboard instead of course of plastic. Same goes for the wrap around the phone itself that protects it. When you get the phone out you will see that this is the special version, the Viva Magenta. I really actually like it but also the texture on the back having this leather like effect. Really nice. Apart from that we also get in the box a charger which is a 68 watt charger. And of course a special extra. These are actually Bluetooth earbuds. Now I will say that they fit me really nicely but it doesn't necessarily mean that it will fit everyone nicely. Of course it really depends on the shape of your ear. Then of course you will see that you get some manuals included, your SIM ejection tool, but also a really hard plastic case, which is actually something that I really like. It reminds me of rebel cases. Having that side exposed is really nice, especially because it allows you to feel those buttons properly, especially the power button, seeing how that has a texture to it. Then of course we have this extra little box and inside the little white box you will find some extra parts for your Bluetooth headset. This means tips and of course your charging cable as well, allowing you to charge it up but also change those tips around to make it feel better in the ear for someone who has a different shape. And of course your USB-C to USB-C charging cable. So after the unboxing let's discuss my initial impressions so far. Now one thing that I always like about Motorola is the software experience. It isn't the best by any means I think, but I have some really nice features that I enjoy on it. For instance, the shaking of the phone, allowing of course the flashlight to turn on and off. When it comes to the camera, hold it down, do this, and the camera goes on, do it again, and of course the camera flips to the front or rear, it depends on where you are at, at that moment. When it comes to however the software experience just in general use, there are some gripes that I have with it and I still think they need to address it. For one, have multiple apps open and you want to close them all? Well sadly you have to swipe all the way to the other side to then close all. This doesn't feel well thought out for myself when it comes to that software experience. And just like the Nothing Phone 1, the icons for the settings itself are too large. This means again that you need to do more steps to get where you need to be. With other phones basically you have smaller icons and more on the plate itself so you can easily manage everything that you need for instance bluetooth wi-fi so on it's just a lot easier when those icons are smaller and more grouped together instead of having to swipe the whole time to get where you need to be again those big icons for me don't make sense then of course let's discuss the display it's a 6.55 inch OLED display with 144 Hz refresh rate. However, it can go as low as 60 Hz and if you have it set at auto, it will switch between those modes to save most battery. However, it doesn't go lower than 60 Hz. Also, I will have to say that even though this is a 6.55 inch display, it feels smaller in the hand than you think. It feels really similar to the Xiaomi 12X in terms of size, even though it is quite a bit larger than it. It has also helped of course with the texture on the back, making it feel better in the hand in general. In terms of other general specs, it comes of course with the Snapdragon 888 Plus, which is a fine chip for me. I don't think it's the best chip, but it's a fine chip and it's definitely better than having the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 inside because that one, simply put, gets toasty on a lot of phones. There are hardly any phones that actually manage to do that properly. When it comes to RAM, it's either 8 or 12 gigabytes, and of course you have different capacities in terms of memory, starting with 128 gigabytes of UFS 3.1. For the camera setup, we have a 50 megapixel main sensor, which is actually quite capable, a 30 megapixel ultra wide, lucky enough not an 8 megapixel one, and a 2 megapixel next to it. Let's just not discuss that one, because seriously, companies need to stop with having a 2 megapixel camera with a phone. So let's quickly talk about the images taken on the Motorola Edge 30 Fusion. Overall, I would say that the camera is really capable, especially with the main sensor creating some images that are really good, with of course some good dynamic range. Overall, the camera performance is solid when it comes to said main camera. 
However, there are situations where I feel like the sharpening is a little bit too much. It really depends on the situation. Now in low light, there's a little bit of a debate because it can take some excellent shots, really solid shots. However, if it gets really tough, you can tell that it's struggling and again, it will over sharpen shots. In some cases, quite a lot. And therefore, I feel like in low light, it just depends a little bit on the situation itself. But especially with these two shots, you can tell that there's a lot of sharpening going on. But then again, you have some excellent shots like I showed you before with this one. When it comes to the camera video recording capabilities, it's 8K and 30 frames per second that you can do as max. And of course, it's quite useless as well. I generally don't care about 8K resolution on the phone. I rather have good quality 4K than having that resolution that really isn't useful at all. Now, when it comes to battery, it's a 4,400 milliampere hour battery. Surprisingly small compared to a lot of phones, but that's also because of the thickness of the phone itself, allowing less of a battery size to be in there. With that being said, battery life has been good. Not excellent, but good. And if you do want to charge it up, you can charge it up at 68 watts, which is included with the phone itself. Unlike many other brands, but not unlike many other brands. Sadly, there is no 3.5 mm headphone jack, neither is there micro SD support. So extending your memory or listening to music via 3.5 mm headphone jack, which is better than Bluetooth, it's not included which is a real shame, but not really surprising anymore. Audio quality so far has also been really good. Of course you have stereo speakers, which isn't surprising, but with that being said, every single phone treats it really differently, but audio quality has been excellent and it's pretty loud. It could be a little bit louder for my taste, but it's pretty loud. Either way, the Motorola Edge 30 Fusion so far has been a good phone for me. It's good in terms of display. It's good in terms of software, apart from some things that I already stated, and I do really love this feature that every phone should have. Shaking it, turning on and off the flashlight really is beneficial, especially for me, because I walk up the stairs at night and everything is off here. Shaking the phone itself just allows me to see better in low light. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this video about my impression and of course the unboxing of the Motorola Edge 30 Fusion. And let me know if you have any specific questions about it so I can take it with me for the review itself. Either way, hope you enjoyed this video and of course talk to you guys in the next.